five for the Green Wave. Newark comes back man to man now. Irving Wood on the floater, can't get it to go. Dawson comes down with the rebound. Here come the Green Wave. Dish underneath, Taylor puts it up and in. Great push by Matt Dawson to find Phil Taylor on the baseline. What happens is Broncos don't get back to stop the penetration of the ball. Matt Dawson is able to get below the foul line and find Phil Taylor. Here's Dawson on the drop off. And Phil Taylor with five points and closes the gap to one. Well, STO and HH Greg giving away HD TVs throughout April. Every time the Indians hit a home run during an STO telecast in April, you could win a 32 inch HD TV. Register now at STOHD.com. Season starts April 5th, so register now for your chance to win. Partner, you're in eligible. I was just about to ask, did I win? No. You knew I was going to say it too. I, I saw you looking at the card. <laughs> I saw you looking at the card. I, I saw the mind working. We've worked together enough years. I'm I, anticipating I your next like, thought. I was like, I wonder if I'm eligible to win. <laughs> Never win anything. 4.53 <laughs> left to go. 49-48. Under five minutes to go here from the Schottenstein Center. Division four state championship game. Mike Karen, Brad Sellers, Allie LaForce. And the first game of the night session. The big school division one state championship game to follow here from Value City Arena. Payne stays on the bench after the timeout. And Latimer power. stays on course. Power, power, power. <laughs> 24 points to go along with 12 rebounds for Cody Latimer. And a 51-48 lead for the Broncos. Here's the question. Your smaller unit seems to be playing well and got me back into the ball game. Do you stick with them, Mike? Do you stay with this team? Or do you go back to your best player and insert him back into the lineup? Well, Latimer's got the last seven Jefferson points. Dawson would be the answer man for the Green Wave. Under four minutes to go here, fourth quarter. They've gone to zone to try to find Dawson. See if they can locate him. He's at the top. They got him open for three. Quick shot for the left-hander. Knocked out of bounds. Jefferson basketball with 345. Left to go and an official timeout on the floor. Great finish in store here in this fourth quarter. The Broncos behind Cody Latimer have made a run. They're up by three. Do you know why I think Time Warner Cable is so much better than AT&T U-verse and satellite? Seems like they're always coming up with ways to save me time, like video on demand and start over. It means I have more time with the kids. Me and Maddie, yes. we built the soapbox. Yes. Yes. I'm okay. See, that's why you wear a helmet. Innovations like start over, they don't have them. Time Warner Cable does. Services start as low as $29.95 per month when you bundle. Open now through April 18th, all new. Celebrate the Year of the Tiger. Live Tiger shows daily included with the price of admission. Discount tickets at Mark's. Pay one price right all day. STO is your home for the OHSAA Division I Championship. Brought to you by Farmers Insurance and Taco Bell. The Division I preview tips off at 8. Followed by the championship game live at 8.30. For info, visit sportstimeohio.com. On the next Cuyahoga Community College High School Sports Insider, the grand finale of the Winter Sports State Championships. Boys basketball state champs are crowned. We'll have all the action from Columbus. Join Bill Baranke and I for the Cuyahoga Community College High School Sports Insider Monday nights at 7 right here on Sports Time Ohio. Welcome back to the Schottenstein Center. You take a look at where we are with 345 left to go. And the Broncos of Jefferson Township have the lead. Welcome back courtside. Mike Cairns, Brad Sellers. And I'll tell you what, we talked whether or not you play without Adrian Payne, do you bring him back in? But you look at what Cody Latimer has done without him, he has put this team on his back. Cody Latimer has been a presence down low. 
Actually, the Broncos are plus seven without pain since he's gone out. But the dilemma now for the coach is, what do I do? As a player and a person who thinks he understands this game fairly well, I'm coming back with pain. I'm going double-fisted on the block. I've got Latimer on one side. I'm going to pain the other side. I'm telling everybody on the perimeter, you pump it inside to one of these two. Nobody takes a shot but these two. Well, Latimer's got the last seven. Payne remains on the bench. Ten for ten from the field. That is not a stat miscue. That is right on. 24 points, 12 rebounds for the 6'3 junior. Very efficient performance by the senior. 51-48. Three and a half left to go. Broncos looking to work it a little bit. Ball movement. Let's see if they get the punch in the Latimer at some point. Juan Gay traveled, traveled with the basketball. A chance for Newark Catholic here to at least tie with 3.17 left to go. Both teams have done a great job protecting the basketball. It's the first turnover in almost eight minutes of this game. They're falling back to a half court trap now. One, two, two. Typically, will create an opening for somebody cross court. There it is. Dawson gets it inside. Adams. And Adams is fouled. That should be Gay's fifth. Well, Adams playing with four fouls. Sends up Juan Gay. That'll be the fourth personal for Gay. Check it, four. Adams has been on the bench a long time. A little rusty from the line. And there he is. Big fella's back in the game with three minutes left to go. So Adrian Payne checks in with four personal fouls. Just eight points, six rebounds. And his team up by three right now. The second one is good. The Broncos have been a plus seven without the Division Four Player of the Year. Let's see how this changes things down the stretch. They get into his hands. Nice pass, Jackson for Devin Foster. What a great good press by the Broncos. Look to get it in the middle, pushed it down the sideline, able to find Foster cutting to the basket. Four-point leader comes Dawson, tries to get around Payne. Payne comes down with a rebound. Nothing the big fella could do. And then stolen by Mormon, but he couldn't handle it and stepped on the end line. Dawson with a presence of mind to go right at the big fella, knew what the foul situation was, and there's nothing he could do. I'll try to get his fifth. There are the four key players with four personal fouls. 2.34 left to go, 53-49. Broncos with the ball and the lead. Foster out to Payne. Four corner look here for the Broncos. Spreading things out. Looking to wind the clock down a little bit. Recognize that they're in the penalty. Drive right down, couldn't get it to go. Irving Wood had the lane in a wide open look at a layup. Pressure now, Dawson with the basketball. Down four. Taylor calling for it. Cox inside, Taylor right hand good. Great move by Phil Taylor. Cox found him cutting down the lane. Wood on the missed opportunity for the Broncos at the other end. 53-51. Under two minutes left to go. Payne, strong, couldn't get it to go. Payne gets his own rebound. Back up and he's fouled. And if that's on Adams, that's his fifth. Big fella snakes the baseline, unable to complete it, but he was able to grab his own offensive rebound. Look, you got to be aggressive down here. Got to play it out hard. Was able to track that back down and go back trying to finish. Nate Adams has fouled out. Derek Adam will check back in. 129 left to go. 53-51. Adrian Payne, six points in the first half, just two here. Due to foul trouble in the second. Been down a long time. Good. Big free throw to come in off the bench. A couple seconds into the game. 
and drain the first one. Chance to extend the lead, and he does. He's got a really nice touch. Nice, nice looking stroke. Hard to believe he's just a 60% free throw shooter because he does have a very, very nice touch. Well, Indians baseball returns to Sports Time Ohio. Opening day, Monday, April 5th. Coverage starts at 1.30 with Al Pulowski and Indians on deck. First pitch with Matt Underwood and Rick Manning is at 2.05. The Indians and the White Sox season opener live from Chicago, Monday, April 5th, starting at 1.30 here on Sports Time Ohio. 129 left to go, 55-51. Broncos in the lead. Well, if you're Newark here, you want to cut, get into the timeout and you see the coach that's drawing up an offensive set. Probably looking to get Matt Dawson free, but they got to have a score. Got to have a score, and it can't take all day to come. And after the score, we got to get a defensive stop, looking probably to exert pressure at the far end of the court and try to harass the Broncos and create a turnover if you can. No silly foul, because at this point, everybody's in the penalty. And from here on out, it's two shots for every foul instead of the one one. We get set in the final minute and 29 seconds here of regulation. Adrian Payne is in. Cody Latimer has been the guy. 24 points, 12 rebounds. Nate Adams has fouled out for Newark Catholic. Gay and Payne are both playing with four personals. Cox on the other side playing with four as well. Jefferson staying with his 1-2-2 two, two trap. Trying to make them take time off the clock. See what Newark gets out of this thing. Dawson's double team, and he calls a timeout. Exactly what you wanted to happen out of a 1-2-2 two, two trap. Have a waste time and a timeout. Full timeout for the Green Wave as you take another look. And I think that's a good call by Art Winston and his crew to come back and double team Dawson. No doubt about it. Dawson wasn't happy to call that timeout. Not happy to have wasted the timeout in that scenario. But now if you're in Newark, now you know what to expect coming out of the timeout. So now we should be drawing up a play on this island that helps us get the ball inbound. And now we get the ball inbound, get us into a set that could be a quick hitter where we can score on a, a offensively very quickly. Let's listen in to head coach Art Winston. Good trap there, good trap. Both of y'all, good job, all right? Let's go. Hey, we're a minute 17 away. Let's go. Let's start hit our free throws, all right? Let's go. Hey, we got a rebound. 17 left to go. You hold on with 40. Winston and his seventh rank Broncos trying to hang on, get it done. Up by four. Newark Catholics got the basketball. Now still minute 17 left to go, partner. There's a couple possessions left in this basketball game. Are you looking for the best shot possible or are you looking for a three? Well, I'm looking for the best shot possible. A three is not really at the top of my list right now. I'm gonna get a quick shot, quick layup if I can and then come back and try to give me a stop on defense. On the other side, if, if I rebound the basketball if I'm, if I'm Jefferson, uh, I don't have to score. Mormon cross-court pass to Cox. Cox pulls up, rims out. Cox trying to tip it back in. Payne, big rebound. Minute left in the basketball game. Payne works his way out. Big fella coming up court. Payne, and he's fouled. Big fella's got to be aware that they're going to be tracking him from behind. <laughs> big smile on his face. That's what you need down the stretch. That's why he's back, back in that lineup. There's no doubt about it. No doubt in my mind to ever bring him back. He's at the free throw line here. Well below his season average, but he can make a big hurt with these free throws here. And not only to bring him back, Mike, bring him back and put the ball in his hand. No use in having a weapon if you're not going to use it. 11 points, 9 rebounds for the Michigan State recruit. Second one on the way. No good. Dawson comes down with the rebound. There's still some life. Down by 5. Under a minute to go. Dawson double team. Dawson in trouble. And the foul. If that's on Payne. That's his fifth. That's number 5. That's his fifth. And there you go. 
You have to be aware of your circumstances at all times. No need to pressure the ball there. You're up five. You have four fouls. Take another look. And that was probably the lightest foul I've probably seen in the tournament for the last two days. But nonetheless, the referee blew the whistle, and you have to abide by the decision. You cannot put yourself in a situation that may cause you jeopardy or, or harm to your team. Both teams in the double bonus. Dawson five for five from the line. And that's his first miss. Now, if I'm Newark, I'm looking for Dawson to sink the free throw and then extend pressure full court. If I'm Jefferson, make a miss, take the ball out, get it, get it inbound, and no turnovers. 20 points for Matt Dawson, four point game. Dawson. And Derek Adam getting called for the foul on Irving Wood. So right away, they foul off the inbound with 48 seconds left to go. So Wood will go to the line, and he'll shoot two. Irving Wood, the biggest free throws of his season, are occurring with 48.9 seconds left to go in the fourth quarter of the Ohio Division IV state championship game. Wood bends, fires, and he got the roll. <laughs> got that baby to crawl in there. Kevin Cox checks in. You look at Nate Adams on the bench. Oh, coach used to say about hook or crook. Five point game. Wood, perfect. Six point game, 48 seconds left to go. Newark needs a quick score. Mormon, cross court, Dawson. Dawson leans into a three. Off the back island, Taylor with the rebound. And Latimer comes up with the steal. And here's a dunk. Mormon gives chase, <laughs> and he fouls Cody Latimer. Oh, Latimer trying to get his feet together. Cody Latimer has done everything to put the Broncos on his back and bring him 28 seconds from a state championship. 10 for 10 from the field, 4 for 6 from the line. 12 rebounds, 2 assists. An MVP type performance. Rims it out. Four for seven after that shot from the line. And still some life. Six points. The green wave still alive. And that is short. Loose ball. Still a loose ball on the floor. Possession arrow favors the green wave. 24 seconds left to go. A six point basketball game, hang on. 24 seconds, plenty of time. A couple of trades away from a tie ball game. Newark cannot take a long amount of time to score this basket. Mormon, Cox, and Dawson are your three point shooters for the Green Wave. Mormon's got the basketball. And he's gonna shoot the three. Big rebound underneath by Joby Jackson, and he's fouled with 14 seconds left to go. Uh, great look by Newark. Mormon couldn't get it to drop. Jackson underneath to snatch it down. Uh, Jackson will go to the line. Just a 44% free throw shooter. Jefferson has got the key rebounds, but problems putting away Newark Catholic. Big free throw there. Seven point game, 14 seconds left to go. You see Cody Latimer's contingent, and they have every reason to have a big smile on their face. Second one missed. And a turnover underneath. And Latimer tried to finish big, but couldn't get it to go, and then Jackson swats it out of bounds. Latimer tried to stuff that one back. And that got Adrian Payne up off the bench. <laughs> 6.3 <laughs> seconds left. Need a three and a quick one. Dawson fires. No good. Rebound. Blocked and that's how we finish. Jefferson, the Broncos of Jefferson Township have collected the Division IV State Championship with a 59-52 win over the Green Wave of Newark Catholic.
Great ball game, great effort by Newark Catholic to try to hang in there, get themselves righted, got themselves up. Well, they were able to hold that lead. A great performance by Dayton Jefferson to battle himself back into the ball game and get themselves in the position to take that big state title trophy down I-7. Dayton Jefferson wins its fourth state championship, which moves them into a tie with Portsmouth, Newark, Los Angeles St. Joe's no. out of Cleveland, Columbus Worley, Dayton Stevens, St. Henry, and Hamilton for fourth place in most titles won. Of course, Middle Middletown leads with seven. Columbus East, Sacra and St. Vincent, St. Mary's second with five each. So the fourth state championship. Congratulations to Coach Art Winston and the Broncos. Just a great effort from both teams. They battled so hard. No one gave up. Obviously, New York Catholic have been ranked number one all season long. They gave that type of performance today. Just not enough material to get them over the hump down the stretch of this ball game. Time now for our Taco Bell player of the game, and it's got to be the guy that carried the Broncos from start to finish. Number 30 himself, Cody Latimer, 24 points, 12 rebounds. At a full state championship. The Massel and Jackson Polar Bears led by their bigs, Josh Egner and Mark Henniger. D1 recruits, and for good reason. Egner does the dirty work and cleans up around the rim. Archbishop Moeller is a team characterized by its versatility, whether it's the grace of Charlie Byers, the hot hand of Justin Morlock, or the size and determination of Griffin McKenzie, each of the Crusaders' starting five can hurt you. On paper, it's boys to be a good one. The only question now, will 32 minutes of play be enough to determine who's gonna hoist the hardware? The answers unfold live in HD next on Sports Time Ohio. in Columbus and the Schottenstein Center is starting to load up for the big school state championship boys division one championship matchup Massel and Jackson the polar bears facing off with the Crusaders of Cincinnati Moeller hi everybody welcome to Sports Time Ohio's continuing coverage of boys championship Saturday our last game and our final state champ is about to be crowned I'm Mike Cairns Welcome to the program. Glad to be joined, as always, by my partner, the former NBA star, Brad Sellers. And what a matchup we have on tap between these two squads tonight. Well, Mike, you know, I like to say we saved the best for last. And D1 <laughs> is the best. And we had two great performances in the semifinals last night. And I'm looking for one outstanding ball game that's high above the rim tonight. Let's get up close and personal as we step inside the Maslin Jackson Polar Bears and their head coach in his fifth season, Mike Fuelheim. Coming out of the Federal League, averaging better than 68 points a game. And a couple of key players will be falling for you tonight. Double zero, or agent zero, as we like to call him, the 6'6 senior, Josh Egner. Uh, Josh Egner electrified the crowd last night, Mike, with two thunderous dunks on the baseline. One even catching it off a of glass as, as his uh, point guard, Brad DuPont, threw it to him like old school traffic style. <laughs> and you know what? The size continues to get a little bit bigger. His best friend and running mate, the 6'7 senior, Mark Henniger. Oh, well, Mark's bringing 21 points and almost nine rebounds a game. And they got the bookends forwards on the baseline, looking to be active, looking to be big, and looking to play very strong for this team tonight. Jackson looking for their first ever state championship. However, their opponent tonight has been here before, the three-time state champ, the Crusaders of Moeller, as we take a closer look at that squad tonight. Led by Carl Kramer, and the Crusaders have had an outstanding season to get here to the state championship, averaging better than 57 points a game. And they are led by the GCL Defensive Player of the Year, and a guy that coach says might be one of their best all-round players, Alex Barlow. Well, Alex Barlow is the heart and soul of this team. Obviously, coming out of the greater Cincinnati area, with great basket, high school basketball in that area, this team has done a great feat just to get down here in Columbus. 
The Xavier coaches are on hand tonight. We've seen several of them already. And the reason why, this fella right here, number 44, Griffin McKenzie, because that's where he'll be going next. Well, Griffin's bringing almost 12 points a game and seven rebounds a night, but he's going to have his hands full, and he's going to have to play awfully big tonight to go up against Mr. Egner and Mr. Henninger. Should be a great matchup. Our final state champ will be crowned in just a few minutes. Starting lineups and the opening tip from the Schottenstein Center. It's the Polar Bear and the Crusaders. Come back and join us here in Columbus. I love free stuff. Mouthwash, toasters, fortune cookies, this robe, balloons. That's why I love Time Warner Cable. They give me a lot of stuff. I like free HD programming, Roadrunner with Power Boost, and start over at no extra cost. AT&T U-verse? They don't do that. What? I opened a couple bank accounts. Extras like free HD, AT&T U-verse doesn't have them. Time Warner Cable's digital cable does. Services start as low as $29.95 per month when you bundle. I'm a shrimp blogger. I've traveled seven continents just to find the perfect prawn. The legendary Hercules shrimp blocked it, then I ate it. There was nothing shrimp I'd left unblocked. But when word came in that Taco Bell had Pacific shrimp tacos with six succulent shrimp marinated in a waterfall of spices, I had to ask, should I blog it or keep this one for myself? The new Pacific shrimp tacos only at Taco Bell. Welcome back to the Schottenstein Center. Maslin Jackson, Cincinnati Molar, and this place continues to fill up in anticipation of our fourth and final state champ to be crowned here this evening. And it should be a great matchup between two squads that have certainly earned their way into this championship game. Brad, we've seen the, certainly the up-tempo up style of the Polar Bears, the Jackson, and the adaptable styles to the Crusaders of Moeller. <laughs> oh, well, you've seen two great, great styles here last night. Obviously, Moeller came out and played an outstanding ball game, adapting to the circumstances they were in, playing up-tempo, slowing it down, playing physical, all the things needed to win. On the other side, you had Jackson, who basically played a city-style game. It went up and down. It was hard-nosed. It was man-to-man. -man. It was no gimmicks, no, no mess. It was just coming out, getting after it from the top, to the top of the gun to the end of the gun. You'll notice throughout our broadcast tonight, brought to you in HD, there are a great contingent of township representing both Cincinnati, both the Maslin areas. Of course, Mas Maslin known for many great championships, football championships, but not a basketball championship. And that's what Jackson has going for them tonight against a team like Muller that's won three state championships. Well, you see, you see two great cities when it comes to sports. Obviously, everyone knows Cincinnati and Cincinnati Moeller, and their history is long in this, in this state of Ohio. On the other side, you've got Jackson, who is known for uh, uh, not much so much basketball, but this year it's been a basketball year, and you can tell by the support they have received in Columbus over these past two nights. They are in full effect tonight as a crowd that was wrapped around the building last night trying to buy tickets for tonight's game. As a guy who grew up in the northern part of Ohio, it's always bragging rights when north meets south and a venue like this where better than 15,000 will watch some of the best players on display tonight. Well, definitely, it's definitely bragging rights. It's north versus south. But at the end of the line, at the end of the night, you've got two teams here have battled all season long to make it to the state finals. You're here and you've got 32 minutes of basketball in order to make it be known where you want that trophy to go. Both of these teams definitely have a game under their belt in the semifinals, but how crucial is the first few minutes of the first quarter to get settled down as quickly as possible? Typically what you find out if you have some nerves, which you should be nervous in a state final game, and you want to get those out as quick as possible. Those who can uh, get those nerves out of them as quick as possible and then settle the rest of their team down and everybody get into the flow of the rhythm that got them to this game is going to probably be the most effective and have the best out chances for a good outcome tonight. The anticipation for this game has been tremendous, hasn't it? Oh, it's been, it's been extremely high, extremely high all day since we left here last night. I think people were talking <laughs> about you're exactly right. And you made mention of the lines that were wrapped around the arena to try and be, buy in to a state championship ticket to get themselves in one of these seats tonight. I thought it was the, you know, I thought it was the bus line for the shuttle to get to parking. <laughs> 
Ooh. Let's take a look at the school profile for Maslin Jackson out of the Federal League and athletic director, Terry Peterson. And here is their tournament trail. This is how the Polar Bears got down to Columbus and got it done as they beat the number two team in the state in Gahanna Lincoln 62-50 last night to get themselves into this championship matchup against Moeller. And there is a closer look. One of the highest scoring teams that came down here for the state tournament. The rebounds with the two bigs, 31 points per game for the Steels might be the big key for Maslin Jackson tonight. Now look at the Crusaders of Moeller as you take a look at their school profile out of the always tough Greater Catholic League. And when you play in the GCL, you're tested night in and night out. And there is the trails. They got through Princeton, LaSalle in overtime, the regional final, and another overtime matchup back to back in the state semis against Menor. And there is a closer look at the Crusaders. They will slow things down on you, but they can put some points up. Don't be fooled by some of those stats. Of course, with their big fella, Griffin McKenzie, averaging almost 28 points a game as a team, but they too will steal when you're not looking at eight steals per contest. And of course, the turnovers right around 12 per game. So a very good contrast between these two teams as we Listen in to the PA announcer for the starting, the starting lineup in tonight's lineups. Division I state championship. For Maslin Jackson, a 6'6 senior, double zero, Josh Egner. For Archbishop Moeller, a 5'11 junior, number three, Alex Barlow. For the Polar Bears, a 5'10 junior, number four, Michael Schull. For the Crusaders, a six-foot senior, number four, Josh Morlock. For Jackson, a 6'1 senior, number 10, C.J. Julian. For the Crusaders, a 6'1 junior, number 22, Shaquille Jinks. For the Polar Bears, a 6'0 senior, number 20, Fred DuPont. For the Crusaders, a 5'10 junior, number 32, Charlie Byers. Maslin Jackson, a 6'7 senior, number 40, Mark Henninger. And for Archbishop Muller, a 6'9 senior, number 44, Griffin McKenzie. Tonight's starting lineups were brought to you by Farmers Insurance. Tonight's Farmers Insurance agents of the game are Keith Williams out of Canton, Robert Lewis from Cincinnati. Please call 1-800-FARMERS or visit farmers.com for auto, home, business, or life insurance. Farmers Insurance, because ready feels good. And we are getting ready. The anticipation is about to end. We're about to tip off for the Division I State Championship as number nine meets number 13 in our state of Ohio. These two schools have done a good job to make their way through the top five teams that were knocked off on their way to get down here to Columbus. And my partner, Brad Sellers, will tell you, some of the best basketball in the country is right here in the state of Ohio. To get down here when there's only two teams left and everybody's watching is a tough task. That was a tough feat, Mike. It, it really is. Especially if you come out of a heavily populated area like Cincinnati, Cleveland, it's so difficult to get here. Just not only from the, those two areas, but from every area. And to get here and play in the final game, you have everyone at home watching. It is your show. It is your time to shine. Sit back, relax, and enjoy our live HD coverage of the Boys Division I State Championship, our final state champ of the night. Josh Egner. Griffin McKenzie, there in the center circle, here at the Schottenstein Center. Take a look at our officials for the night. And we are getting set to throw the ball up and get underway. McKenzie wins the tap, Moeller in control. Charlie Byers running the show at the point for the Crusaders. 
Alex Barlow on the spin. Jackson coming out in this man-to-man -man defense typically like they did last night. Henniger got a piece of McKenzie's shot. Jump ball tied up. Jackson basketball. Just underway here in the boys division one state championship. Jackson and Moeller. Looking to see extreme pressure by Moeller early on. You're seeing it here. They're picking up in the backcourt, three-quarter court. Brad DuPont with the basketball, bothered there by Barlow. One thing you saw from Brad DuPont last night, he was not harassed at all by the guards from the Hannah Lincoln. He was able to steady the ship and ride his crew all the way in. Schul inside to Henniger, and Henniger gets it up over McKenzie for two. Henniger was able to post up high. Able to drop the ball down, so did not fumble it as he did a couple times last night. Caught it, went straight up, and was able to score. Byers looking for some room in traffic. Oh. Off the mark, Barlow's there for the rebound. Barlow tried to bounce it off Henniger, but then got the ball back. Goes up, but he traveled. Uh, you, you saw right there, Alex Barlow was inside. He was aware of Inger and Henniger looking to throw the shots out like last night. No score, we're about a minute 15 in for the boys division one state championship. CJ Julian. Julian looking for some help inside to Henniger. Henniger on the mismatch, gets his own rebound, sticks it back up and in. Uh, you see Henniger sitting in there at 6'7 and commanding that post block area. Big fellow with the first four points here in the state championship for Jackson. McKenzie out top, he can shoot it from there, gets it to Byers, and then back up top to Barlow. Byers. McKenzie had it slapped away, got it back. Byers for three. Charlie Byers making all the big buckets last night and continuing that trend tonight. Three-point goal by Charlie Myers. Pressure from the Crusaders. They will back up when DuPont brings it up. Not to be challenged. Strong, very strong with the basketball on the dribble. The Wheeling Jesuit recruit working on Barlow. Cross court to Mike Schull. Egner trying to get position on Shaquille Jinks. Jinks doing a good job. Cross court, DuPont off Barlow, out of bounds. It'll be Jackson basketball as we check in with my partners, Brad Sellers Keys to tonight's game. Well, tonight for Maslin Jackson, you've got to remember they've got to feed off the fans. They had great energy last night. They're gonna have to do the same thing tonight. They've got to continue to play that athletic style of basketball up and down. Seemed to be very successful for them last night. Egner. Hegner works well with the basketball, tries to go up with the right hand over McKenzie. McKenzie redirected it. And that'll be Jackson basketball. Now, if you're with Moeller tonight, you got to remember that Moeller's going to have to play good, good, tough defense tonight in order to control Jackson's up and down game. And they're going to have to get out on a break and get some scoring in transition to be successful. Pushing and shoving away from the basketball underneath. And a whistle away from the ball. That'll go on Shaquille Jinx. Well, his first, team's first. First substitution of the night, John Ward comes in for the Crusaders, replacing Shaquille Jinx. Good substitution, because they have Jinx checking anger. Does, do, do not want him to pick up a good, cheap, early second foul. Getting a sub in for him right now. Mike Scholl bothered. Goes off C.J. Julian and out of bounds. Be Moeller basketball. You're going to have to be tough with the basketball tonight. This is going to be a very physical contest. And Charlie Byers, the 5'10", smooth guard, 17 points in the semis last night. Running the show for the Crusaders. Drop off to Ward. Back up to Byers to Barlow. Byron slowing things down a little bit here in the first quarter. Jackson continued to play good 
hard to hard uh, man defense, not giving up anything easy. Barlow working on DuPont. Out to McKenzie, back to Barlow. Barlow being very patient. Three pointer from Josh Morlock. Ends up with a three pointer from Morlock off of pin down. Back the other way is Shul. Moeller in control at 6 4, and Shul drew the foul on Morlock. Michael Shul, averaging almost 10 points a game, was able to turn the corner and now is going to the line to shoot two. Well, Morlock picks up his first, team second. Shaquille Jinx comes back in for John Ward. Moeller, number 21, Tony Sabato, and 22, Shaquille Jinx. I uh, caught it on the floor, so he's going to take it out underneath. Let's see if they go inside to Anger. Both Egner and Henniger are in there looking for Henniger now up top. Back ja out to Brad DuPont. Jackson's looking to pound it inside to their bookend forward. DuPont on the drive. Dish off underneath. Egner lost the handle of the basketball and then stepped out of bounds. Bad pass by So on the baseline, throwing it at somebody's ankle. First official timeout on the floor. We are early on in this Division I state championship. Henniger on one end, Charlie Byers on the other. They've traded blows early. Bowler's up by two. All I saw was just a gray wall coming, and that was when we got in behind the stairwell. We wrote the insurance just five days before the tornado hit. It's great to be able to call someone who's local and can answer your questions right away. That's just what Farmers is all about. You know, I know with our old policy, we weren't, we weren't covered as well. Things change and you need to be changing your insurance to match it. Are you this ready? Get to know a Farmers agent today. Find yours at Farmers.com because ready feels good. Can you tell me about Shell Nitrogen Enriched Gasoline? Did you know they could protect your engine? And how do they do that? They clean up gunk left by lower quality gasoline. Then they act as a protective barrier that shields and protects engines against performance rotten gunk. All three grades? That's right, all three grades. Shell Nitrogen Enriched Gasoline, helping you get the most out of every drop. Brought to you by your Northern Ohio Shell retailer and True North Convenience Stores. Right now, major construction is underway at Progressive Field. And on Indians opening day, the ultimate fan cave shall be unveiled. STO, WMMS, Budweiser, and the Indians are giving you the chance to win the cave and bring 11 buddies to the tribe's home opener. And you get to entertain Rover from WMMS. But to win, you first have to be the Wii Home Run Derby King. Show up at one of these local sports bars to get in the action. The ultimate fan cave giveaway. Get the full scoop at sportstimeohio.com. Tonight's Division I OHSAA Basketball Final is brought to you by Farmers Insurance. Farmers, because ready feels good. Also by Taco Bell and the Why Pay More menu, only at Taco Bell. And by Time Warner Cable. Welcome back into the Schottenstein Center, Boys Division I State Championship game. Muller and Jackson, Mike Aarons, Brad Sellers, Allie LaForce from Value City Arena. 6-4 early. So we're sitting here early in the first round of a 12-round prize fight. Everybody's feeling one another, one another out. You know, let's talk about this Muller backcourt of Barlow and Morlock. In the semifinals, they combined for 38 points, Mike. 11 of 15 from the field, 11 of 12 from the line, six assists, no turnovers in 63 total minutes. They're gonna have that same, they have to have that same type of performance tonight in order for Moeller to be crowned state champion. Moeller came again playing back-to-back -back overtime games to get into the championship, so they have been extended in the last two games. Pressure on the ball from the Polar Bears. Ben Galemo has checked in for Moeller, number five. Nice pass underneath McKenzie, and he's blocked by Egner. Egner's there to clean it up. Don't bring it around here. If you don't want it to be mailed back to you at home. Colts fuel line wants him to run. Egner spots up. That would have been good for two. You know, here comes Charlie Byers. You know Jackson wants to go up tempo with an egg, and they go up tempo when they get ignited by a, a defensive spark, a block, a steal. You can look for him to push it in transition. A little bit of a message early when you get it to their bigs, and their bigs is there to answer. 
Byers too strong. McKenzie, nice rebound in traffic. Six and a half and in. Oh, the big fella, Griffin McKenzie, <laughs> making his presence be felt inside. Muller scored the last eight points after falling down 4 0 early. So an 8 0 run over the last three minutes, 50 seconds and counting. Julian to Egner. Egner triple teamed and Barlow took it away. Barlow snatched it. They're doubling on catch on the baseline. Barlow behind the back. McKenzie steps out for three. Short. And that'll go on Shaquille Jinx, who was over the back. That's of his, Henninger. That's his second, Mike. He's going to have to come out. Big fella on big fella here, big fella. Here it is, Griffin McKenzie looking like I'm going to go inside. Big fella's like, oh, no, 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 no. No, no. <laughs> on the playground, they'll be saying, you didn't see the video? <laughs> <laughs> you didn't get the video. Uh, Jackson, after getting the first four points of this basketball game, now has not scored in the last four minutes and ten seconds. And here they are on the run with Brad DuPont. And that's going to go on Charlie Byers, who reached behind. That'll be the fourth team foul. DuPont is strong with that basketball. Very hard to take it from him. I didn't see anyone get a chance to take it out of his hands yesterday. First on Byers. DuPont with the basketball, and he ran the offense very well last night. Jackson looking to go to the post up on the block every time. Egner on the drive, short. Nice job by McKenzie defensively. Good job by Muller, put a little body on Egner. Fires. McKenzie left open for a moment. Cody Wacker now into the lineup for Moeller. This is Morlock for three, short. Henniger with the rebound in the hands of Mike Shoulder pushing now. Jackson on the push. Here comes Scholl with the left hand. Count it! Scholl with the end one. Crossed them over down the key. Here's Scholl on the push with the cross between the legs. Down the lane and able to get it up with the left hand off the window. Great body control. <laughs> Mike Scholl, the 5'10 junior. Cody Wacker called for the foul his first team's fifth. Scholl, a 73% free throw shooter. 14 points in the semi, three for seven from beyond the arc. And the lefty puts it up, and it's good. 8-7, Moeller. Jackson going to a 1-2-2 two, two trap. Giving Moeller a little look. Barlow, deep three. Didn't get the roll. Schull comes down with a rebound. And quickly here comes Jackson. Schull on the dump off, up with the right hand, and the charge call. Oh, great defense by Alex Barlow to be sitting there ready for Jackson on the push. As you saw Dave Devine out of control, not seeing Barlow waiting in the key for him. Dave Devine gets called for the foul. First team foul here with a minute 11 to go in the first quarter. Great pace here to the opening quarter of this boys division one state championship game as we look at turnovers early. Byers looking for room. The give and go is picked off. Here comes Egner. Scholl backed off to DuPont. With the crossover coming. McKenzie way out top, up top to Henniger. Henniger missed it. Went back up to get his own rebound, blocked by McKenzie. Here comes Byers on the push. Muller on the run. Byers, and it's rejected by Agner. Big fella, you didn't see the video. <laughs> Joel, the DuPont. And Jackson's up by one with under a minute to go. That's the breakout. Got to be aware of these big fellas down the lane. They will swat it back at you. Moeller gonna hold for one. Great action here in the opening quarter. Great energy from both of these teams. Egner might have hurt his hand with that last projection. Wave it off right now. Higher off the mark, Henniger with the rebound. Schull, and he's not gonna get it off in time. And the first quarter comes to a furious end. A 5-0 run over the mass minute and 35 seconds for Jackson. Defense. Turn into offense as Egner starts it, and Jackson finishes with the polar bear up by one. I'm a shrimp blogger. 
traveled seven continents just to find the perfect prawn. The legendary Hercules shrimp blogged it, then I ate it. There was nothing shrimp I'd left unblocked. But when word came in that Taco Bell had Pacific shrimp tacos with six succulent shrimp marinated in a waterfall of spices, I had to ask, should I blog it or keep this one for myself? The new Pacific shrimp tacos only at Taco Bell. If you are looking for a vehicle to fit your needs and have been turned down for credit, we can help. We have quick credit approval guaranteed. Here's how it works. Come in, select your vehicle, and get your credit approval in writing on the spot. It's fast, it's easy, it's life-changing. Home of the best selection, best warranty, and always the best price. White Sides of Cambridge, just north of I-70 on Route 209. Visit us on the web at whitesidesofcambridge.com. What is that? That is Roadrunner Turbo with Power Boost. It's super fast. It can give you an extra burst of speed, so you can download music really quick. Same thing for our photos or movies. You just click and boom. It's like you never have to wait. It's pretty incredible. Actually, I was referring to this. Took some liberties with the abs. Maybe. Get Roadrunner Turbo with Power Boost for a burst of download speed up to 19 megabits per second and revel in the power of you. Upgrade to Roadrunner Turbo with Power Boost for only $9.95 more per month. Great first quarter, but three more to go. One in the books. And Maslin Jackson on top, 9-8. We welcome you back into the Schottenstein Center. This boys division one state championship game, and they were trading some blows in quarter number one, Mr. Well, I expected that. I was looking forward to that. A little action. We felt each other out for a couple minutes, and now we got some real fast and furious action. And the thing about it is, Jackson's coming at you with, with, with what they have. They only had one sub in the entire first eight minutes. Whereas Moeller used eight, eight subs to come in and play, eight people to play in the first, first quarter of this game. This has certainly been a game of momentum with Jackson coming out scoring the first four points, Moeller answering with the next eight, and then Jackson comes back with the next five. Well, there are ebbs and flows here early on in this state championship game on the big school level. Muller with the basketball, just underway quarter number two. There's the patience you'll see from the Crusaders. They can mix it up. And that's what makes them so special, and that's why they're here. They're adaptable. They've done it all season long. Byers drops off the Ward. Nice rebound. Barlow got it to go. <laughs> this is gritty. Alex Barlow. Alex Barlow following up on the putback right there. Good quality possession for Moeller out of the break. DuPont for three, short. C.J. Julian comes up with a rebound. Got it back inside to Henniger. Henniger trying to back down McKenzie, and he traveled with the basketball. Great defense by McKenzie to give up ground. Henniger trying to fill him out on his backside. McKenzie backed up and gave him space. That's what caused the traveling violation. Fifth turnover. For Jackson is Ben Galemo checks in for Josh Morlock. Galemo number five, 5'10 five, sophomore. You see the size that Coach Kramer has tried to use coming off the bench, especially with Tony Sabato, who's already been in the game, 6'6 six, six, sophomore. So. What, is, what he's trying to do is keep his people fresh. And he's got to contend with those two bodies on the baseline for Jackson. DuPont on the run. Julian back to DuPont for three. Short. Loose ball run down by Barlow. And Barlow tried to throw it off Henniger, but went through his legs. Into the hands of Devine to DuPont. Egner calling for the basketball as he tries to post up Charlie Byers. Byers doing a great job to stay in front of him. The battle underneath. Agner's a little frustrated. He wanted that on the block. Julian is shut off by Galemo. Here's Egner. Under six minutes to go in the half. 10-9, Moeller. Devine 
bodied up by Charlie Byers. Byers gets called for the foul. We'll send it over to Allie LaForce with more on Jackson. Coach Fueline in the last total, he really wants to take advantage of Egner and Henninger and continue to do so by setting away screens from block to block. Try to create that mismatch, and if that's not there, try to work the high-low game. But I'll tell you what, Moeller's doing a great job of meeting them on help side defense and really collapsing down low. Thank you, Allie. Moeller in the bonus situation. Those are 16 fouls, so Jackson shooting free throws for the rest of the half. DuPont. Underneath to Henniger. Henniger nice. with the left hand count it and the foul. Great lead by DuPont to find Henniger underneath and great hands by Henniger to catch not only in traffic but to give the flip shot above his head off the window. Take another look. Exactly what Allie was just talking about out of the timeout. And one thing we saw yesterday Mike in this in this series was that you had DuPont he will not be stripped of the basketball. Loose ball controlled by McKenzie as the battle for the bigs continues. 11-10 Jackson. <laughs> 5 15 left to go. McKenzie to Ward. Back out to Morlock, who's re-entered the game. Kick out McKenzie for three. That's off the side iron. Ward tried to chase it down, keep it in play. Got it back to Mike Schultz. And Schultz will be fouled by Alex Barlow. A one and one situation. What you're starting to see now from Moeller start getting into foul trouble. They've got two of their two of their starters already with two fouls. Jinx. Michael Schultz shooting one and one. And Byers both have two fouls. So Mike Schultz, 73 percent free throw shooter, will. Go to the line. Shoots a one on one. Front end, good. Not only are, is Jackson big, but they play strong, they play aggressive and fast. It's a recipe for a lot of fouling going on. That's why Moeller's doing a lot of subbing right now, trying to keep people fresh. And Shule's perfect for the line, three for three. Largest lead of the contest for Jackson at three now, 13 10. Under five minutes to go here in the half. Lemo comes off the screen, but DuPont is there on the trail. Jackson staying in this man-to-man -man defense, playing hard nose, not letting anybody penetrate as Moeller continues to run his patient and set offense, looking to free up somebody for a shot. That'll be Galemo who fires away off the side iron. And that goes out of bounds. I'm not thinking that's the shot they were trying to free up to, though. Jackson basketball. 13-10 here in the second quarter. Before number 25, Hayden Fry replaces Griffin McKenzie. Griffin McKenzie will head out. Coach Kramer for Moeller may have to consider coming back with Charlie Byers. He seemed to be the only person yesterday that was really consistently able to go out and score and create shots for himself, even though he has two fouls right now. Hayden Fry will check in for Griffin McKenzie. Fry, a 6'5 junior. There's certainly some size on that Moeller bench. Coming back the other way, Barlow. Barlow, head fake, pulled up. Got it back, under four minutes to go. Things have slowed down a little bit after that opening quarter pace. Moeller trying to control the tempo, running very deliberate offenses. Taking time on the clock, but not only doing that, looking to get a quality possession. Don't have a lot of options out there that can score. See how Moeller started three for seven with just one for ten since on that last graphic. And they're just taking their time, trying to pull Jackson out a little bit of that defense. 3.15 left to go. Four minutes without a bucket. Lemo. Bounce pass underneath. Morlock couldn't get it to go. Ward couldn't get it to go, but Hayden Fry 
The third time was the charm. Good follow by Fry as Mola had two cracks at it off the offensive rebound. Down underneath the Henniger. Henniger with the right hand over Fry. You got 6'7, six, 6'7 seven, six, seven on the block, and they're looking to find it every time. 15 12, under three to go in the half. to the floor. It has gotten physical here in the oh, first this half. A, this is a physical game. Jackson coming out looking to be put some, put some wood on somebody. <laughs> <laughs> Official timeout on the floor. 153 left to go here in this boys division one state championship. The bigs are on display. Henniger on one end and the little guy not to be forgotten. 18-12 Jackson. now through April 18, all new. Celebrate the Year of the Tiger. Live Tiger shows daily included with the price of admission. Discount tickets at Mark's. Pay one price right all day. HGR Industrial Surplus, we sell everything and anything you'll ever want. In my manufacturing process, something from HGR is involved. From our warehouse showroom to your factory floor, big or small, HGR has what you need to get the job done. With the machines from HGR, we're able to do the work at a reduced cost. Go to HGRINC.com today and get more for your money. It's worth going to HGR. There will be something there that you need. HGR's got it. April 5th at 2 on STO. Now a 9-2 run by the Polar Bears over the last four minutes, and they've got themselves a six-point lead as we welcome you back courtside. Mike Aarons along with Brad Sellers in this boys' Division I state championship game. We talked about the one-two punch, Egner and Henniger. Well, forget about Egner. It's been Henniger and Shule, 16 of the 18 points so far in the first half. Well, you know, it's a total team effort. Yesterday it was a couple other guys. Today it's Shule and Henniger. They're getting themselves in the flow early on. And the thing about it, Jackson keeps looking for these two players. They've been able to come out, find Shule in the corner for a couple trays, Henniger, Henniger inside, and they're able to convert. So they're doing exactly what they need to do to mix it up to keep Moeller guessing. Whatever it takes, right, partner? No question. 153 left to go in the half. Roller basketball down by six. Charlie Byers back in to the basketball game. He has to be careful. He has two fouls. Can't, can't play super aggressive. But still look to be effective though. Moeller has gone heavily to the bench here in the first half. Byers looking for room. Drive floater in and out. Egner with the rebound. Egner still looking to get on the scoreboard here in the first half. DuPont on the run. And a blocking foul going to be called on John Ward. DuPont being strong with the basketball as he brought it up across the timeline. Another foul, number 33, John Ward. He was able to gain control here and slide past the defender and avoid the charge. DuPont shooting two. DuPont will go to the line. 60%. Free throw tosser, and that one is up and good. The wheeling Jesuit recruit. 12 points, 7 rebounds, 7 assists in the semis. 
in last night's win. Free throws for Jackson. Jackson is three for four. Moeller is zero uh, for zero, so not really attempting any free throws. And in the foul situation, you've got Moeller with nine team fouls, and Jackson with only two team fouls, which is critical because uh, Jackson will be shooting from here on out to the end of the quarter. DuPont's got the second one up and good. DuPont's got four points and a couple of assists here in the first half. 2012 Jackson. Kenzie looking for a little help. Somebody's got to get active for Moeller. Somebody's got to look to take shots. That'll be Galemo for three. There he is. Galemo on cue. The player that Coach Kramer says may be the best shooter he's ever coached. And that's better than 19 years. That's saying a lot for a kid that's just a sophomore. No doubt about it. Egner on the spin, got it back. Egner strong with the right hand, missed it. Still looking for his first points. Alex Barlow comes down with a rebound. Egner 0 for 4 from the field. 35 seconds left to go. Five point lead for Jackson. Lemo gonna back it out. Patience here. Playing for the final shot. McKenzie back out top to Barlow. Winding it down here. Two look to go. It'll be Barlow on the drive. Barlow inside. Couldn't get it to go. CJ Julian with the rebound. And fires the baseball pass length for the court. That'll be short. First half. Goes to Jackson. Barlow lucky on that one. Almost got a got an offensive foul. Called him on a little push off to the basket. But time for everybody to get to the locker room and, and regroup. A first half of runs by both of these teams. Jackson on top, and Allie standing by with her head coach Mike Fuline. Coach, some big runs there in the first half. It started with your inside play. Are you satisfied offensively? Uh, not really. You know, I think we need to go inside even more. Inside out. You know, they're doing a nice job of kind of getting us out of rhythm. I think we've adjusted to the speed of the game a little bit. And, uh, you know, we just got to continue to defend and rebound and get to their shooters. I mean, we, we've given up too many wide open threes. So, um, you know, if we continue to play, get up and down, defend and rebound, we have a chance. And, see what happens. To you, what's keeping Muller in this game and what adjustments will you need to make in the second half? Well, you know, the three-point shooting. They've, I think they've hit four threes. Just got to get to shooters. You know, we have to get to their shooters, challenge with the ha high hand, and, um, you know, I think we will. We have 16 minutes to win a state championship. We better we better find the shooters. Well, good luck, Coach. Thank Thanks. you very much. Appreciate Thank it. You. Thank you. Thanks, Allie. Three-point shooting has kept Muller in the basketball game. However, the Crusaders with just five points over the last seven and a half minutes of this basketball game. The Polar Bears have controlled the second quarter and the first half. They're up by five. The tempo has been up and down. And the boys' Division I state championship game, half number one is in the books. And the Polar Bears are up by five. I'm a fireman. I'm, I'm gone sometimes two to four weeks at a time on fires. Being prepared is the number one thing you need to do. My farmer's agent, her name is Maureen Martinez. Uh, she's awesome. We had a discussion about what he wanted to protect. That kind of helps me to build a comprehensive insurance package around them. Everything else is just replaceable. This isn't. Are you this ready? Get to know a farmer's agent today. Find yours at farmers.com because ready feels good. We've dug them out, we've cleaned them off, the snow is gone, and we're lighting them up at Dunning Motors. During our spring clearance event, take a flat $5,000 off 2010 Dodge Avenger RTs. Buy today for just $18,690. Or find brand new 2010 Chrysler Town & Countries with leather, moonroof, DVD, marked down $7,000. At Dunning, we will beat any advertised price of any dealer, anywhere, anytime. Why pay more? Get to Dunning Motor Sales in Cambridge today. Hi, I'm Josh Schnaufer, funeral director and owner of Schnaufer Funeral Homes. Seven years ago, we set out to build the area's finest funeral home with the goal of providing your family the best funeral service. We now have funeral homes in Crooksville, Roseville, and Zanesville that are modern and spacious. Our well-educated and caring staff is available 
24 hours a day to help. We will treat you like family. Yeah. All right. Sixteen minutes of basketball left to determine the big school state champ. It's the halftime report pre presented by Farmers Insurance. Welcome back into Sports Time Ohio Studios, along with Jim Isabella, Pat Vianchek, I'm Dave Bacon. Guys, not exactly the tempo you expected, but uh, both of these teams have shown through the course of the year, third quarter, they really get things done. Yeah, both teams have big margins in the third quarter. A lot of that has to do with the adjustments that their coaches make at halftime. It also depends on the adjustments that the players make. And if one of these teams makes better adjustments at the half, that could be the difference. And Jim, we had touched on it. The start was we felt more important for Jackson just because their first time there, they did a heck of a job. I mean, defensively, you hold Moeller to 15 points, you're doing a lot of things right. Well, you got to see the presence of Henninger and Eggner, what they can do. And you could tell Moeller's a little bit uncomfortable going on the inside. So why don't we go back to one of my keys to this game was guard play. The second half, and even though people have been uh, laughing at me here behind scenes and saying, we may not get to 100 points. Well, guys, it's going to open up in the third quarter. I guarantee it. If I don't, I'll buy Viancek a hamburger. Well, we haven't been laughing behind you. We've been laughing right behind right. right. Thanks a lot. <laughs> Let's take a look at Listen the first half highlights. Jeez. The Division I state championship game. Moeller and Jackson and Charlie Byers. A nice job of burying the three. One of the threes that uh, Moeller hit, they got a lot of good looks. They just didn't knock enough of them down. Morlock hits the three again. Uh, Three-point shooting, pretty good for Moeller, given the score here. Yeah, throughout the year they've been good, but uh, they're going to have to get a little bit more going uh, in the paint too in the second half. Michael Schull, the hoop and the foul. And he's one of the X factors in this game. Remember those names, DuPont, Julian, and... Schull for three. A man right there, <laughs> right on the cue. Thank you, sir. 18-12 at that point in time. A nice job of closing it. Ben Galemo, a nice job of hitting the three and cuts it to 20 to 15. Certainly very manageable, anybody's ball game at this point in time. And, and a little, little surprised by the score, but given the atmosphere and the moment of a, a Division I state championship game, not all that surprised. Both teams will settle this down. Is, this is the type of game that Moeller especially likes. Jackson likes mm -hmm. to get out and score 70 points a game. Moeller wants to keep it in the 50s and beat you by about six or eight or 10. Uh, so the, the tempo might be in Moeller's favor, but certainly Jackson is playing well enough to, to be leading at this point. Well, and the other thing that, that strikes me, Dave, is, is go back to Pat's point about adjustments. These are two coaches who weren't kind of sure how their players are going to respond. Now they know, they've looked at the matchups, and I can tell you this, as typically happens in a high school game, before they went into the dressing room, those coaches all gathered and said, what do you think? So they've been comparing notes. I expect a lot more uh, aggressiveness, and it's interesting. I don't know what Pat thinks, but I think we're going to see a little full court pressure now. I think we saw a little of it. I think we might see more of it. Moeller showed it early, but they uh, they got they got a little foul trouble there that took away a little bit right. of that that ability to to push the tempo and and, and pressure their guards. So uh, in the third quarter, uh, with all their starters back on the floor, you could be right, Jim. That pressure could take its toll. If you're Moeller's coach, are you telling your guys you got to keep going inside against Agner and, and Henninger because they're athletic, they're big, go at them. You, you go at guys like that. Well, you do. You want to do that, but you also want to be able to create something with your defense. And right now, Moeller hasn't done that. Uh, and the looks they've gotten are good looks, so you, you also tell them, hey, keep shooting it. You know, we're, we're in the state championship game for a reason because you guys have had the courage to shoot. You have to continue to maintain that in the third and fourth quarter. Yeah, and we heard, we heard Coach Fuline with, with Allie just before half. 16 minutes to a state championship, and I think that's probably got to be the theme for the Polar Bears. have never won a state championship in any sport. 16 minutes away with a five-point lead. They've got to feel pretty good. DuPont and the guards have got to do this tonight. If this wasn't a glass table, I would do it. Pound, pound, pound. Get that ball inside because on the other side, we talked about the three-point looks Moeller's had. Egner and Henniger have had some good looks. I expect to see Henniger get the ball a lot more in the second half. 
They've been impressive defensively. I mean, oh, yeah. we heard about them running the floor, but they're guys that affect the offense of the other team because of their athleticism. Their length is good. They also showed a little matchup 2-1-2 uh, two, two zone just to give Moeller something to think about, throw them off a little bit. Uh, you can do that when you have the kind of length that Jackson has. If you're, if you're Moeller, what are you telling your guys to get things swung back the way you want? You, you clearly didn't play very well. You're only down five. Uh, you know, that's nothing. Well, it's, it's, you, you want to take each possession. Each possession counts right now. You have to take care of the basketball. That hasn't really been a problem. But continue to take the shots we've been taking. But we, have to, we just have to knock a couple of them down. The other thing is they haven't gotten to the line at all because they're not penetrating. They have to get something off the, going off the dribble, too. And if you're Coach Fueline, Jim, what, what do you like and what do you tell your guys we need to change maybe just a little bit? Well, it's funny. He's talking about penetration. We have not in any of these four games seen a lot of dribble penetration. And I'm thinking right now that's where Brad DuPont, the senior guard, becomes big, big, big. If he or Julian or Schull can get the ball inside, and then they can kick it around on those short little passes, dump them off to Hanninger and Egner. That's important because I think the Moeller guards did a very good job of not making it easy to get the ball inside. So really we go back to the points. Guards are going to be the key. They always are in tournaments. And now they play a bigger role because not only do they have to shut out the other guards, but they got to get the ball inside to the big guys if you're Jackson. What about McKenzie? Griffin McKenzie is, I mean, and, and how do you counteract Egner and McKenzie. He, he just has to come out with some confidence. I mean, he, he, he took a three early. He missed it. Then he decided to shot fake and put it on the floor a little bit, and he didn't get anything to go. If he knocks one down, he'll get confidence. Whether it's an offensive rebound, put back, or draw a foul and get to the line, hit a free throw, you, you just got to get a little something going first in order to get your confidence back. I think that's big for him. Yep, and again, I go back to the turnovers, too. That's the big thing. Moeller doesn't turn the ball over much. Jackson has a tendency to do that. Well, we've got 16 minutes of basketball left. Someone will come away as the Division I state champs. Will it be Jackson, their first state championship, or will Moeller take their fourth Division I state basketball championship? 16 minutes, Mike Cairns and Brad Sellers will have second half action. Imagine a perfect day. The sun is shining, you wake up, suddenly you can speak Portuguese. You finally mastered nunchucks. And bacon is good for you. Even on that perfect day, DirecTV will still charge you extra for HD. And they'll still expect you to put a big honking satellite dish somewhere. Now imagine life on a not perfect day. No satellite dishes. DirecTV can't say that. Time Warner Cable can. Services start as low as $29.95 per month when you bundle. We've dug them out, cleaned them off, the snow is gone, and we're lighting them up at Dunning Motors during our spring clearance event. Take a flat $7,000 off 2010 Impalas. Buy today for just $21,250. Or find brand new 2010 Tahoe LTZ 4x4s. This one has it all, and it's marked down $11,000. At Dunning, we will beat any advertised price of any dealer, anywhere, anytime. Don't overpay for your Chevrolet. Get to Dunning Motor Sales in Cambridge today. Fast. Fast doesn't even begin to describe it. I mean, these speeds will blow you away. Oh, and just when you think you can't go any faster, this power boost kicks in, and then you're seriously flying. It's fast. It's Talladega fast. Question. Mr. Junior, are you going to talk about Roadrunner High Speed Online all day? Yeah. Next question. Add Roadrunner to your bundle for as low as $19.95 per month. <laughs> Farmers Insurance halftime report continues here from the Schottenstein Center. Jackson on top of Moeller, 20 to 15. Welcome back courtside. Mike Aarons along with Brad Sellers. A lot of give and go in this first half. Runs by both teams. Little surprised at the score here at the end of the first half. I don't, uh, you know, I, I'm, I'm not surprised by the score because both teams have been filling out one another. Obviously, we like to see a little bit more action, but if you've been really paying close attention, there's some intense basketball being played out here. You know, a little, little getting your gut physical basketball, and traditionally what you see out of the bigger schools. 
While the score is low, does the tempo kind of mimic the way Moeller would like things to go, even though they're trailing by five? The score is to Moeller's favor. Jackson wants to go up tempo, and uh, they just have not been able to convert all their attempts, the limited attempts that they've had. They've controlled the game, but obviously they'd like to make it go a little bit more up tempo. All right, our Ali LaForce is standing by with Joe Hansbauer from YouGive.org. We're here with Joe Hansbauer, the executive director of YouGive.org. What is YouGive all about and what's its mission? We uh, look to connect uh, high school students to service opportunities uh, and uh, track their hours for them. Now tell us about March to a Million. Is this the first time there's been a joint effort with OHSAA and YouGive? Uh, this is actually the second time. We got to work with them for Service Week this year. Uh, and then March to a Million this year is going to be about getting uh, students in Ohio to do a million hours of service. And if they want to get involved, where can they get more information? March to a million .org. Okay, thanks so much for taking the time. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you, Allie, and thank you, Joe, as we continue here with the Farmers Insurance Halftime Report. We close in on the tip-off here of the second half. And you talk about the bigs. We talk so much about Egner and Henniger coming into this basketball game. Yesterday, it was Egner who controlled everything. Tonight, it's really Henniger. Egner's been big on the boards and defensively. He's been there. He's got a couple of blocks and four rebounds, but down on the other end, the big fella has really put some points on the board and really come off what was kind of a so-so performance for him last night. Well, that's the that's the luxury of having booking forward. One day it's one person, the next day it's the other. And one picks up the sack offensively, the other picks up the thing defensively. And they've got that performance out of their booking forward today. Obviously, they're going to look to keep pounding that thing inside and give Moeller more fits in the second half. All right, let's take a look at the way things shook out here in the first half between these two teams. And we talked about kind of the hot and cold, not a great first half shooting for Moeller, 6 of 24, just 25%. And the free throws, well, big news for Jackson is they never got in any foul situation and allowed Moeller to get to the free throw line. So the points in the paint favoring the Jackson Polar Bears. Jackson has been the aggressor all game long, and that has translated into a foul trouble for Moeller. In uh, the second half, Moeller's going to have to come back and try to extend itself and establish a tempo that is more sufficient to the way they're willing to play this game of basketball tonight. Speaking of Moeller, Ali standing by with her head coach, Carl Kramer. Coach Kramer, it's been a game of runs this first half. The threes are keeping in at three clutch ones. How about that shooting? Well, we're going to have to make threes to have a chance to stay in this game. They're so big. We told our drivers to keep driving the ball, look to kick it out to our three-point shooters. What are going to be other keys to the second half, Coach? You know, we got to take care of the ball. Don't let them have transition baskets. We just want to get it to the last four minutes of the game. If we get it there, we think we have the kind of kids that can find a way to win. Thanks and good luck. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thanks, Allie, as we get set for the start of the second half in this Boys Division I State Championship game. The commissioner of the OHSAA joins us. We welcome in Dr. Dan Ross. And what a nice spectacle as the crowds have continued to grow, and it's been a really, really nice weekend here. It's been a fantastic weekend. I think there's a lot of people in Ohio that have showed up uh, to enjoy the quality of basketball that's been played. Now this is the last of the winter season, so to speak. It has been a busy one for you and all of your commissioners. How, is, how, is, how have things gone as we get ready Actually, we've had a great winter season. This is the uh, culmination, I guess, with our ninth tournament in, in five weeks. Uh, and, and it's gone very, very well. We had the blip in there with the uh, February weather with the snow. Uh, but it, it, everything worked out really, really well. But it worked out well because everybody works together well. So you get the officials and the tournament managers and the schools that are trying to make those adjustments. And, and the media, with all their help and helping us, let people know, okay, the, you're not going to play tonight because of the snow. And, and this is what and how we're going to fix this. So. We've been, we've been blessed. We've had a great winner. Brad DuPont going right to the rack to get us started here in the second half. Jackson up by seven. Now, of course, the boys' tournament, one of the highlights of the entire year, as you can tell by the crowds. And, you know, it seems like every year there's always something special to come down there. This year, you've had a chance to honor some greats. And one of my all-time favorite players, we had a chance to see Jerry Lucas, who I think he could probably still play in a lot of men's leagues somewhere around the country. But just one of the many things there's, there's so many different uh, late Jesse Owens, a lot of people who, you know, you've remembered throughout the state here. Well, and, and Al Oliver, the baseball great, and Tony Trabert, the, he's the current president of the International Tennis Association, but they're Buckeyes, and, and they were born here, and they played here, and 
They were honored by Buckeyes, and I just think that's a wonderful thing. They felt so good about being here in front of people from Ohio and people from Ohio who have heard about them. Many of them have read about them and have the opportunity to be here and, uh, and to rub shoulders with just common folk. <laughs> Commissioner, in this case, you know, I, you know, you're always trying to improve the product. What's on the agenda for high school basketball in the state of Ohio? Well, I think we want to make sure that uh, we continue to make sure that we focus that high school sports are all about making kids good students and good citizens. And basketball, if we can help raise those goals by playing basketball, we want to continue to do more and more of that. I want to tell you that I think I see a lot of events across the country. Ohio has always had a great tradition in high school basketball and are now involving all the student athletes, female and, and boys. I think we have a quality that is representative of our state across this country. Well, I appreciate that. But and when we're just the, the basketball piece, we have such great basketball. We have a lot of great sports, but we want to make sure that that student part of student athlete because that student part ends up making great citizens. There's no doubt about it. And they're going to come back to our communities and we want them to be top notch citizens and their experience with basketball is going to help make that happen. There's no question about it. Jackson off to a quick lead here in the start of the second half as they've run off the first five points. Ten point lead, their largest in the game here with 642 left to go. Let's talk about a few of the newer initiatives for the OHSAA that they're undertaking. One of them is about coaching education. As a coach in the high school level, I've already had to go and get my certification, but more importantly, well, I'm glad to hear that. <laughs> why, why the need, though, to feel that the coaches need to go back and get this all important education? Well, let me let me tell you the and I'm not sure what the national percentage, but ours is probably somewhere between 60 and 70 percent of our coaches are people who are not educated. And so we want to make sure that the people that we put with our young people are people who are trained, that have had some kind of a course in the care, development, nurturing of young people. Number one, that'll help any coach in that situation to do better, but the kids are going to be better instructed by people who have had some kind of a training in that field. One of the big keys and one of the national uh, uh, issues has been concussions, not only uh, in our state, but all across the country. What kind of things can you do to better educate people and prepare and even uh, just get people into a safety situation where you can cut down on the possibility of things like that happen? Well, I think, number one, we have to make sure that we continue to educate. And I, and I think the, the National Federation is changing the rule this year to make it a little bit more strict. Uh, that I think the rule that we need to work through is if you're in doubt, you hold someone out. That if they have a, a, a you could, might call it a dinger, uh, I think there's a lot of misinformation about concussions. A lot of times people think you have to get knocked out to have a concussion. And there's only 2% of the kids that have a concussion are knocked out. So we need to make sure that we do a better job of educating. I think we do a very good job now, but we can always do better. We have a, a concussion video that's going to be coming out in the summer that we're going to tie into our mandatory sport meetings uh, in the fall for every season, and they'll be mandatory for parents, coaches, uh, and school administrators to have the opportunity to see that video and, and to probably better recognize the signs of the concussion and the protocols of things that you have to do if you have before you continue to return to play. So many people, and one of the big questions you always get is to see Henniger go up, get the basket, and the foul to extend the lead to 12. But one of the things you always talk about, especially around state championship time, they always talk about trying to break up the different divisions, public school, private school. You've heard this particular debate going on and on and on. Where's the OHSAA on all of it? Is there ever a time that that could be possibly considered to, to break things up even more than they already are? Well, there's a survey that, that went out to many of the school administrators before Christmas. Uh, looking to, to make that opportunity become available. They asked the OHSAA to kind of be a part of maybe trying to craft a solution. Uh, some of the, I know the options that they were looking at is either separate or a multiplier. We're going to put a committee together to look at a lot of the options, and we'll be doing that later in the spring. Appreciate you stopping by. It's always great we're to always catch up with you. Thank, <laughs> thank you so much for what you do. Thank you for covering our tournaments. And thank you for your support for high school sports. Well, thank you and your staff. You make it easy for us, really, you do. And we love what you do, and we thank you for what you do. Thank you very thank much. You. Dr. Dan Ross, and while he's sitting there, he's been the lucky charm for the polar bears. 
because they have gone on a 12-0 run to start the second half. A couple of big three-pointers, and right now their largest lead of the game up by 17 here with 4.20 to go in the third quarter. Jackson has come out of the second half and up the tempo not only through pushing the ball, but the defensive blocks, getting turnovers, pushing it, and converting on the other end. Mola's got to settle down and get somebody's got to get something going here. Moeller trying to stop the bleeding here with under four minutes to go. Down by 17. You're down 17. You don't have a lot of time to keep passing around on the outside. Egner, the rebound off the miss. And Dupont on the push. Shule calling for three. Hit one last time, and that one's off the back iron as Egner goes flying high. Henniger over the back. Loose ball foul on Jenks on the floor. And Henniger and Jinx battling underneath. They are controlling the glass underneath. Shaquille left Jinx the foul. gets called for the foul. 3.38 left to go. The tide has changed. Henniger comes up with the block. Mike Schul finding the range from downtown. And then inside to Henniger, it's Jackson by 17. came to look at the edge because I saw it last year. It's got good mileage. I like the, all the, the look of it. I text a lot and I talk on the phone a lot. So to be able to do that hands-free and not have to be messing around with my phone. Now get into a Ford Edge and experience it yourself with 0% financing for 60 months plus $1,000 bonus cash when financed through Ford Credit. I always come here first. I'm drawn to it and last year and this year. I just like these cars. Right now, major construction is underway at Progressive Field. And on Indians opening day, the ultimate fan cave shall be unveiled. STO, WMMS, Budweiser, and the Indians are giving you the chance to win the cave and bring 11 buddies to the tribe's home opener. And you get to entertain Rover from WMMS. But to win, you first have to be the Wii Home Run Derby King. Show up at one of these local sports bars to get in the action. The ultimate fan cave giveaway. Get the full scoop at sportstimeohio.com. Everyone knows Ohio has the best fans around. Sports Time Ohio wants your best photos and videos displaying pure Ohio pride. Just log on to SportsTimeOhio.com and submit shots showing us how big of an Ohio sports fan you are. The best shots will be used in the next What's Up Ohio commercials. STO is now high depth, so we'll need high resolution shots. Use your camera's highest setting. Get those cameras clicking and rolling, sports fans, and log on to SportsTimeOhio.com. Polar Bear Nation is alive and well. And why not? A 12-0 run to start the third quarter. 32-17, Jackson. Tribe fans, home opener, Monday, April 12th. And you can get $2 off upper box seat tickets for opening day. All you got to do is go to Indians.com slash STO. Don't miss all the excitement of opening day on Monday, April 12th. Again, visit Indians.com slash STO for $2 off upper box seat tickets. Down by 17, Allie in the middle of that molar huddle. Coach Muller and the assistant coaches extremely fired up. They said, I want you to guard, guard, guard from one baseline to the other. Never stop, box out, and you have to pay with, play with passion and stop thinking. Thank you, Allie. Over the last eight minutes, 23 to five, Jackson run for the 17 point lead in front of 12,920 here in the Division I State Championship game tonight. Inside to Edgar Strong uh -huh. for the basket, and the big fella's on the board tonight. Big fella gets on the board. Moe's going to look to go up tempo with the thing, but you can't go up tempo when you got a guard like Brad DuPont facing you for Jackson. 19 point lead. Kenzie calling for the basketball on Henniger. Had it slapped away out of bounds. Moeller ball. The other problem with Moeller is you're playing a deliberate style of basketball. Now when we ask you to turn the pace of the game up, you're not used to playing like that. Josh Morlock checks in for Shaquille Jinx with three minutes left in the quarter. You're down 19 points. And the only way you're going to get back in the game is play at a faster pace. There's a shot. Somebody's going to turn and shoot it. Morlock on the drive, kicked out to McKenzie, baseline no good. Shot. Barlow, and he's fouled. That's the aggressiveness Moeller's going to need to get back into this ball game. 
First free throws of the basketball game coming up here for Moeller as you take another look. Alex Barlow shooting two. Now Barlow will go to the line, 74% free throw shooter. And that one is rimmed out. The guy that Coach Kramer says is his most valuable player, leads the team in steals, assists, number two in rebounds, defensive player of the year in the GCL, 21 points, six rebounds in the semis. As you take a look at Brad Tupont, who's come back in. Barlow has been the key defensively for this basketball team. And he missed both. Another rebound for Jackson. Jackson has not 10 rebounds in the quarter. Inside to Henniger, and he got it to go. They're outdoing Moeller on the glass, 27 to 11. 12 points, 11 rebounds for Henniger. 16-0 here in the third quarter. Three ball. Still looking for their first point. Fires with a nice rebound. Fires underneath Barlow, and he's fouled by Henniger. Finally a foul on one of the big men. Enger and Henniger both have, at that point, had zero fouls. Take a look at Henniger down on the other end. He has been strong tonight. 12 points, 11 rebounds, and two blocks in 22 minutes worth of work as Barlow is right back at the line. The 5'11 junior continues to attack. And he's missed three in a row. Aiden Fry will check back in, the 6'5 junior, for Griffin McKenzie. McKenzie goes out with just two points and three rebounds. Second one on the way for Barlow, it's good. This is the third point tonight for Alex Barlow. It's ben Glemo will go out. Moe's gonna Cody have to, Wacker comes in. Moe's gonna have to look to push the ball, to create that by going pressure full court and staying with pressure. Wacker checking Brad DuPont. Here comes Hector throws it down. I told you, big fella, it was coming. Back the other way. Barlow fighting for the loose ball. Barlow goes right back at him and puts it up for two. Uh, Moeller staying with it, but this is the pace that Jackson wants to play at. Here it comes. Shul. Pulls up. Got it. They're going to make Moeller play fast pace. Jackson on the run. 40, 18, 15 for Shul. Fires for three. Short. There it is. Brad DuPont all alone for the layup. Mike, they're playing with six players. They're not even tired. 42-18. Barlow's going to fire a three. Henniger the rebound. Going to push again. Number 12. Jackson trying to throw the knockout punch here in the third quarter. 10 of 14 from the field here in the third quarter. DuPont on the drive, making 11 of 15. DuPont shaking his head like, I know you're not trying to stay in front of me. 44-18. Polar Bear is trying to run him out of the building. The kid DuPont has the heart of a lion. 24-3 run for the Polar Bears. Barlow. Foul called against Jackson. Jackson. So Josh Egner will get called for the foul. Third team foul for Jackson. First foul for Egner. Away by Shaw. Egner knocks it away out of bounds. Moeller basketball. 24 seconds left here in the third quarter. And what a quarter it's been for the Polar Bears as they've come out and outscored Moeller to this point 24 to 3. Jackson hasn't taken his foot off the gas, though. He's looking to extend the pressure, 
extend the pace of the game. This is the pace that they want to play at. Very comfortable playing a high octane type of game. You talk so much about the big guys. How about the little guys? Michael Schul, 15 points on two or three shooting from beyond the arc as he takes a seat. Dilemmo from way downtown. Egner skies for the rebound, had it slapped away by Barlow. Morlock looking for room, and he's fouled. Egner on that last punch in guy, I think got punched in the mouth a bit. We can get a shot of that. Jackson, 11 of 15 in the quarter. 14 points in the paint of the 24 that they have scored. Byers looking to go strong inside. Reverse. Nice play there by Charlie Byers. Online but short third quarter comes to an end. And what a quarter it has been by Jackson as they outscore Cincinnati Moeller 24 to 5. And the big fella, welcome to the big stage. 44-20, Polar Bears, as we head to the fourth. Do you know what Time Warner Digital Cable? If I get this HD TV, I can get tons of HD for no extra fee. AT&T UVerse, they charge me like $10 more every month to get their HD. No way. Yeah, that can add up. It's like they're taking money that was yours and keeping it for themselves. Yeah, like a, you no. Know, it's like what? Dressed as a? Electronic store employee. Free HD? AT&T UVerse doesn't have it. Time Warner Cable does. Services start as low as $29.95 per month when you bundle. The Golf Zone with Jimmy Hanlon. Golf pro Jimmy Hanlon returns for the 2010 golf season to discuss PGA events, answer your calls and emails, and help improve your golf game. The Golf Zone with Jimmy Hanlon tees off live Sunday night at 9 on STO. Amazement. Amazement. Excitement. Commit commitment. Single game tickets on sale now. Sports are great for a kid's body. Steroids aren't. They can ruin tendons and legs and arms. Steroids can stunt bone growth and increase the chances of liver cancer, heart attack, and stroke. Steroids don't make great athletes. They destroy them. Talk to your kids. Need help? Get help. Visit drugfree.org. championship in basketball and they are eight minutes away as we get set to start the fourth quarter and take a look at the game summary it was all Jackson in that third quarter on 11 of 15 from the field and Michael Scholl has been on fire Michael Scholl has come out and played extremely well spotted up very well behind the line he's been an aggressor he's been an aggressor and has paid off for him on both ends of the floor being getting after it offensively and defensively so they have been doing it on both ends of the floor. Seven assists in the third quarter on the 11 field goals for Jackson. Scholl and Henniger, that inside out game that Coach Fuelline talked to Allie about at the end of the first half. Value City Arena, Columbus, Ohio, the boys division one state championship game. Mike Aarons, Brad Sellers, Allie LaForce in what has been a show of force from Jackson in the start of the third quarter, and we start the fourth Jackson quarter with a 20 point polar bear lead. That's a great <laughs> advantage for Jackson to come out of the third quarter up 24. Moeller's gonna have to come out and get busy. Look to field shots quickly. Griffin McKenzie is back into the lineup for Coach Kramer. He's got the basketball checked by Henniger. He's gonna spot up for three. Short, Egner with a rebound. Egner's going to run the floor. He's got Henniger with him. Egner going to take it himself. Kick out. Whistle 
whistle away from the ball. On Moeller. With a foul on the baseline. Justin Morlock. And Josh Egner as Egner was bodying for position. Fifth team foul on Moeller. Morlock's fourth. That'll bring Shaquille Jinks back in for the six foot senior. Morlock will sit down with just three points. Just underway, fourth quarter, 44-20. DuPont, nice defense by Jinx, and then DuPont tried to swat it away from McKenzie, but gets called for the foul. Good defense by Jinx to stay with DuPont in front of him. Actually, I think that's just someone that finally calls him to make a turnover. But Jinx immediately comes out of the game. Sixth team foul for Jackson, so Moeller will be in the bonus from here on out. Looking for room around the Jackson defense. Drops off Morlock. Great look at a three off the back iron. Rebound Devine. Turns it over. Dilemmo. Oh, touch, touch, touch. Oh. So Byers, and Byers is fouled. Travel. They'll call him for a travel. Byers got tangled up with Devine. Jumped in, jumped in the air and came down with the ball still in his hand. Good Auto defense. Automatic travel. 6.58 left to go here, fourth quarter. Home run pass. Henniger on the run. Henniger is fouled by Barlow. And the rim is still rocking. And his boy was ready to follow that in, too. Homer foul number three. I mean, they look Barlow to push Mike all the time. It's always six. offensively pushing the ball. I don't care up or down. We're going to play at one pace. It's the pace that we know. Remnants of last night almost on that run out that was finished by Egner. We'll go down with as maybe one of the <laughs> greatest dunks I've seen hit the high school basketball level here in Columbus. No doubt, no doubt. One of the special plays ever made in a state final type atmosphere. Henniger drops down the second one. And he splits the pair. 15 points, 12 rebounds for the senior. Barlow hassled by DuPont. Now on the run. Barlow threw it away. Well, Jackson continues to harass, continues to push the tempo up, and they're up by 25. Jackson continues to look, <laughs> and their bigs will push the ball too. <laughs> they won't just hold and catch. They will not try and slow this game down. They're, they are not that type of team. They're as high energy as we've seen down here. They play such a physical game, too. DuPont from the corner, short. three short. Nice rebound by C.J. Julian. Julian kicks out to Schultz. Schultz, the left-hander, let it fly. Comes up short, Julian's there for another rebound. And this is where the size just starts to wear Moeller down. Back up to DuPont to reset the offense. This is Mike Fuelein's style of offense. To Henniger inside, <laughs> and count it, and the foul. McKenzie, his second. Great drop off by DuPont down the lane. Henniger's got 17, take another look. DuPont down the lane to find Henniger on the baseline. All he has to do is catch and complete. Can't ask for much more if you're a big. Fifth assist for DuPont, 602 left to go. McKenzie, his second team six. Put Henniger to the line. First, te Our first team are all Ohio. Kent State one. recruit. Two. Be playing against his best friend and childhood friend, Josh Egner, in the MAC from here on out. One big going to Akron, the other big going to Kent State. They're going to see a lot of each other for the next four years. There'll be a lot of purple in the stands for those guys. Yeah, there will be. And a short drive at that. McKenzie pushes it up into the offensive zone. Under six minutes to go. Moeller trying to get something going here. Mike, this style is not conducive to a big comeback. 
Barlow spots up for three. Got and out. Got to play quick going to the hoop. Another rebound for Julian, his seventh. They're settling for jumpers. And the jumper's not going today. DuPont back door to Hanniger. Hanniger's got 19. Great drop off by DuPont. Unlike last night when Henniger had, tr had trouble catching and completing today, he's quick at completing. There's the three ball from Griffin McKenzie. 49-23. Drop off, Julian on the run. Julian, power move with the right hand. When they turn the corner, Mike, they turn the corner with authority going to the back. CJ Julian. CJ Julian having a game right here. Fire pulls up. You got it, you got it. Rebound, DuPont swatted out of bounds by Alex Barlow, Jackson basketball. Here comes Moeller, Moeller extending pressure again, but this has led to a breakout just about every time they've done it. Off at center court is Egner, and he goes on a full run. 31-8 run here in the second half for Jackson. And that's where we are with four and a half left to go. Some of the 12,920 already out the door in this one. Loose ball. Barlow and CJ Julian given battle will be Molar basketball. Substitutions. Cody Wacker comes in for Ben Galemo. Even though the large deficit, Cincinnati Molar continues to compete in this contest. Trying to put up a good effort and finish strong. Just has not been Moeller's night. Nine of 42 from the field, shooting at 21%. McKenzie short on the three. Tigner comes down with a rebound. Here comes Jackson on the run. Henniger, free throw jumper no good. Barlow with the rebound. Charlie Byers looking to push. Pull up jump. Good in and out. It was down, came back out. Alex Barlow's got the rebound. Kick out. Wacker for three. Got it. There's one to go down. Wacker measured it up in the corner, got himself squared up. Was able to drop one. Fifth three pointer of the contest for Mola. That's his bread and floor now, four corners. Shule on the handoff. Shule going right down. Great drive, great game plan to spread the floor and let his great guards create opportunity. Kenzie short on the three. Shul has 17. There's no slowdown in the Jackson offense. Turnover. Kenzie comes up with the steal. Kenzie 